Assalamu alaikum. Today we will start new chapter, chapter 13, functions of several variables. Uh, let me kind of recapitulate what we have done so far in the semester. We had, uh, or you know, where does where where does this come in in the grander scheme of things? In Calc one, you did functions from R to R. Example: f of x equals x squared. Then in chapter twelve of this chapter uh, of this class, we did functions of this kind. Functions from R two, uh, sorry, R to R two. Example would be uh, the parameterization of a circle. We did. We said, let's say. Circle is a vector value function because it outputs a vector. Cosine d, sine d, right? One input, two outputs, or two dimensional output, rather, we say. And similarly, we could do r to r3, parameterization of curves in 3D space. In this chapter, chapter 13, we are not talking about these are functions of several variables. So there are multiple variables and a single number as the output. Now this concept has been introduced to you just not with this formalism and notation. For example, you have a cylinder. Radius R and height H, right? What's the volume of the cylinder? Is pi r square, which is the area of the face of the circular face of the cylinder, times the height of the cylinder, pi r square h. You can think of it, this volume is a function of two variables. It needs two inputs to be able to compute this formula. Pi is of course just a constant. Right? So the idea, the volume, the way the volume of cylinder relates to the cylinder's dimensions, it relates as a function of two variables. So it's a pretty natural idea that some quantities are dependent on more than just one input or more than one quantity. Okay. Let's recall back in calculus one what did we did with functions of several variable, uh, functions of variable, single variable when we first started. We learned what is domain, range, uh, limits, and then we use limits to do continuity, and then we go to derivatives. Okay, and then of course. After we do domain and range, we also then do somewhere here graphing, right? We do some graphing after domain and range, but we also do more graphing later when we're using derivatives, when we have more knowledge of a function, where does it increase, where does it decrease, and so on and so forth. So we're going to pretty much follow the same scheme of concepts to learn how to deal with functions of several variables, how we can manipulate them, how we can get information about them, and how we can what does derivatives mean here? And then, of course, uses of derivatives, right? And the big use um, we saw of derivatives um, in, in calculus one was graphing and optimization of applied problems, you know, maximum volume, maximum area, all those kind of problems. So, we're going to follow the same scheme of things uh, as far as um, uh, functions of several variables. Are concerned. So in the next video, I will talk about domain, range, and graphing. And graphing will need a little bit more time because uh, we are going into higher dimensions, so we need a little bit more experience in graphing these kind of things. Okay, so in the next video, let's talk about domain and range and graphing.